Hi there, I did a tutorial on how to make a traditional British Christmas cake um, or wedding cake. Um, I'm sorry, I'm loaded with cold, um, but you have to just get through it. Well, it's flu actually and I've been feeling lousy for days, but I'm just going to have to get through this. Okay, um, but it's not over. Uh, once you've made the Christmas cake um, and it's been wrapped and put away uh, and set aside. Um, you can leave that for a month or, or two um, and get ready to decorate it nearer to Christmas and obviously um, it's getting that time so I'm preparing to decorate my Christmas cakes and when I say cakes is I do them as gifts for family members. Um, so I'm going to run through what you'll actually need um, I've got a smoother, you'll also need a rolling pin, but <laughs> oh, my memory, I haven't got it on me at the moment. <laughs> um, a pastry brush, or a knife really, but a pastry br brush would be better. A pizza cutter. Your fondants, I've got one and a half kilo of fondant. I probably won't use out all of it, but it's just in case. It's to cover a 10 inch cake and I don't want to be tight with it <laughs> and some marzipan this is actually a wedding cake that I'm doing and um, for ease I've used ready roll or I'll be using ready roll but for my own Christmas cake I actually make my homemade marzipan and it's I'm not gonna I'm not just bragging it it is a hundred percent better but ready roll does the job so there we have it and I've also got some apricot conserve or apricot jam or jelly, whatever you call it. Um, conserve is a milder flavour, not as sweet as jam. It's actually good with cheese. <laughs> this is just to adhere the marzipan to it without giving too much flavour off. Um, you can use marmalade, I suppose. Um, and I have done in the past when I've struggled finding the apricot. Um, but apricot jam or jelly or apricot conserve is the best for this particular recipe. So now I've run through the um, ingredients, I'm going to show you how you prepare the Christmas cake for decoration. I'll be right back. Hi, I've actually come back in a little bit early just to show you something because I thought I'm missing stages out and it's not fair on the beginner. So um, I've unwrapped it just threw everything off it was wrapped in cling film it was actually wrapped in um, greaseproof paper as well but I've thrown that away and then I realized I'm much shorter than this and then finally wrapped with some foil I tend not to put the foil directly onto the cake because I think it actually affects the taste I could be wrong but I don't actually let the foil touch the cake anyway um, it's important this what you can do to add to the majesty of the beautiful British Christmas cake um, is feed it <laughs> like a loved one um, treat it like a baby and what I've done is um, I made this a month or so ago this one um, and I place holes around the cake with a dowel you can use anything but just place a hole try not to go all the way down to the base because you'll pierce the base and we're using that upside down to decorate it and then you literally feed the cake with brandy and uh, uh, it loves it <laughs> it loves the brandy and you can do that once a week or in the build up to Christmas or to the wedding or, or whatever and uh, it will be even more scrummy and um, so there is the a little pointer for you it's not just a case of um, making the cake and just putting it away I actually give it some tender loving care some uh, TLC and I feed it weekly with some brandy and uh, it smells amazing not too much obviously but uh, enough to um, penetrate inside and it's a preservative alcohol anyway so it's not going to um, ruin the cake somebody said to me once oh you use brand you feed your cake with brandy oh that's not health and safety I went what 
Brandy? It's alcohol. It's not going to go off. Um, so that's a load of rubbish. Um, <laughs> so you feed the cake anyway. Um, and especially if it's your Christmas cake, you can feed it even more and add more brandy the, the stronger you want it. But once a week leading up to Christmas, just give it a, a feed. <laughs> so I'm going to set up uh, and show you what I was going to show you earlier. I'll be right back. Well, I'm back again. This time I've put it under a large cake board, but that's just for ease. But I've actually sat it, I don't know if you can see, I've sat it on a 10 inch thin board and that's what it's going to be sat on. Um, and I've put some royal icing underneath to adhere the cake because this is actually a wedding cake and I don't want it moving about. But you can, if it's just for you and your family, you can just use the apricot conserve um, to adhere it to the cake board. It won't budge really. This just this is going to be in transit, so and this is for a friend of mine. It's her wedding. So now what I'm going to do now is with my don't know if you can see, uh, yeah, um, with my conserve apricot conserve or apricot jam jelly, <laughs> um, I'm going to apply it with a pastry brush all over the cake. So you don't need lots, but you need something sticky for the marzipan to sit on. A Christmas cake is very, very rich. It's indulgent. It's about OTT. <laughs> this is not a fruit cake. Don't be mistaken. If you see tutorials telling you it's a Christmas cake and it's light in colour um, and there's not a lot of fruit in there, then it's not a Christmas cake. It's just a fruit cake. Okay, and I mean, Christmas cake dates back, I think, to the 16th century, if I remember rightly. Um, and I think it was originally it was made with oats. Um, and it's, and each country has its own version of it. This is a kind of a traditional English, British recipe, um, and it's one that I've used for about 20 years. <laughs> because I've been, I know I do cake decorating, but I've been baking for a long, long time and using recipes and testing them out and things like that and coming up with my own slant on it. And the recipe I've given you is kind of a mixture of a traditional um, old recipe. And I sometimes think traditional baking is best. Um, you know, it stood the test of time and uh, this Christmas cake recipe proves it. So now I'm going around the edge. Okay. Um, speaking of uh, traditions, um, I think every country has its own version of it. So do what you like. I like this one, but you choose what recipe you want and what suits you. You can put nuts in it um, and things like that. You can bulk it out with anything. Um, and when you're making the recipe, you might think, oh my gosh, there's so much fruit. Yep, <laughs> because it's a Christmas cake or a wedding cake. It's a traditional recipe. And believe you me, the, the fruit is needed to give it that rich um, flavour. You. It's dense, but it's delicious. You can, I mean, you could, you couldn't cut a big quarter and eat it. I don't suppose it's in moderation, but although tell my husband that, <laughs> you know, um, and although each country has their own um, way, I mean, I had brandy, I think in Scotland they had uh, whiskey and it's more of like a Dundee cake um, and they had whiskey to it. Um, but here in the, in England, I think brandy is the popular choice. Um, but one thing, although the, the traditions are different, one thing is um, the sentiment across the world is still the same and our love of Christmas. So I've gone all the way around the cake and covered it. It's all sticky wet, which is what I'm wanting. 
So I'm going to put the kettle on now actually because I'm feeling a bit ropey. <laughs> and uh, I'll come back and show you how to apply the marzipan. Hi, I thought I'd zoom back in. Um, this is just very quickly. Um, I've got my marzipan here. It's a ready roll uh, marzipan and it's perfect for a Christmas cake. Don't worry about it. I know I mentioned I make my own but this is ideal. It's so easy and you've gone to a lot of trouble making your cake. You just want it simple and this does the trick. But one pointer is when you're using marzipan really make sure that your work surfaces and your hands and everything are immaculately clean. The reason being is because it's sticky it will pick up any residue that you've got on your work surface. So with that in mind I'm going to go now and uh, start to sort this marzipan out. I'll be right back. Okay I've used icing sugar and rolled out my marzipan. You need quite a bit of uh, icing sugar because it is sticky as I mentioned before. Um, I'm just smoothing it off. You don't have to do this but I'm a bit... I like to smooth it before I apply the marzipan. It'll still get crumpled when I apply it but um, it's just a habit I'm in. Um, so. Now it's rolled out, I'm going to apply it to the cake. Now I hope you end up seeing this. I know last time I did it. Oh, I didn't get on camera, so I'll try again, shall we? So, just bear with me one second. Okay, I've rolled the mouse pan off my rolling pin. And I'm about to lift it up. As you can see, there's plenty of icing sugar underneath. I'm just going to see if you can see the cake. <laughs> I'm going to try and do it the other way then. So I'm going to find the middle, on average the middle, it doesn't have to be exact. And I'm just going to use the rolling pin to roll over the marzipan. Can you see that? I hope so. Um, oh dear, my nose, help me! Oh. Um, and I'm just going to smooth that top on, okay? using the smoother, right, just so it's totally stuck to the top before you start trying to blend it in on the bottom, okay. So let me see if I can show you this. So you skirt it out and then, uh, I'm, I'm right handed but I'll do it with my left, and then with your hand pull and pat. <laughs> that's my technical term for you <laughs> pull and pat all right all right <laughs> pull and pat and hopefully that mousy pan will stick to the cake like this can you see <laughs> I hope you can and a little trick for me is I just push the mousy pan in a little round because I don't want it pulling, I don't want it pulling down. There's a lot of waste but I can use that marzipan. So I just take off the edge first using a pizza cutter just to take off that edge. I don't want it dragging onto the floor. And then what you can do with that marzipan, roll it into a little ball and uh, cover it in cling wrap or cling film, uh, which I will. Um, off camera. <laughs> Alright, I'll just get on with the cake and I'll wrap that up in a minute. <laughs> okay, um, can you see this hopefully? The sun is blaring through, winter sun. Um, so, rubbing and I'm just going to, with my smoother, just push it in. Don't worry, the cake isn't going to look like this, but it helps when I'm cutting the edge that it goes, it doesn't cut too short if you understand. You'll understand when you start doing it yourself. Oh yeah, I know what she means now. Alright, so with your pizza cutter, go in and just gently go around. No rush. I'll just move that back just in case you're not picking it up. No rush. Just slowly. Take your time. You've you put a lot of love into this Christmas cake. Don't rush it now. Again, you can use that mousy pan again. I'll move that off to the side. Okay. <laughs> and then with your smoother, as I say, I'm right-handed, but I'll do it with my left. 
I'm just going to smoothen the cake off. Okay, it's moving about on that cake board because this cake board, it's not fastened to it. It's fastened to the thin one underneath. So, going round, smoothing off, um, like so. <laughs> and you can trim it up any way you want. Now, traditionally, um, you could leave it with just the marzipan. Sometimes on my Christmas cake, I just put a thick piece of fluted marzipan on the top um, with a little bit of a dusting of icing sugar, and that's me done. Bearing in mind, my marzipan's about that thick. <laughs> because I love it. Um, but you don't have to cover it in marzipan and uh, then uh, fondant. This is just what I, I'm doing um, because it's a wedding cake and I do it for Christmas cakes if I'm decorating them as a gift. But you could actually just leave it as the fruit cake and uh, serve it on the day. It, uh, and when people come over. You don't have to decorate it, this is what I'm just showing you. So I've decorated that now. I'm going to trim it up a little. Um, there's no air bubbles luckily. Uh, if there was, you just prick them with a cocktail stick. And um, I'm going to set up now and uh, show you how to cover it in fondant. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm rolling out the fondant. I've put some icing sugar underneath. I tend not to use a lot um, because it dries out the fondant. <laughs> um, what I tend to do is I put a little bit down, um, work with it quickly, work with the fondant quickly, uh, lift it up with your rolling pin and put a bit more on and then change the direction of the fondant, lay it down and start rolling again. Um, when I say move quickly, uh, don't answer the phone, don't ring your friend <laughs> um, while you're rolling. Or if it does ring your phone, leave it, ring them back later. You really must work quickly because it dries out and then it will crack when you're placing it on the cake. Um, this is, I'm making a traditional Christmas cake, a traditional British, sorry, um, or English Christmas cake. Um, because everybody's country varies um, and traditionally because it's a traditional cake it's made with marzipan um, it's an indulgent cake as I've said the fondant is an extra um, you're using it if you want to decorate your Christmas cake or you're wanting to make a wedding cake which is very traditional in the UK to have a fruit cake in the mix not everybody wants one because it's not to everyone's liking, um, but traditionally um, it's an indulgent cake for special occasions and Christmas is one of them. So I'm going to continue to roll this off camera <laughs> because I need to be round the other side and the camera won't let me. So once I finish rolling um, I'll come back and show you what to do. Okay I've rolled it out and to the size that I'm quite happy with. And this is where we need to move quickly. What I've done is, um, with my pastry brush, I've gently um, brushed on the marzipan of the cake water. And that'll help the fondant to stick to the marzipan. Um, because sometimes your fondant, some of your marzipan dries out and you need it to stick. So I've rolled the fondant over my rolling pin. I've brought the cake into shot, hopefully. Okay, I'm gonna move quick. All right, um, bringing it in, and then again finding the middle, middle, um, yeah, and then I'm rolling it over very, very quickly. Um, with your smoother, as I say, the fondant is an extra. You could have just left it at the mousy pan. Um, and decorated it using the marzipan as well. You could cut shapes out with the marzipan of Christmas trees and things like that and stick them on but I'm using this uh, with fondant because I'm decorating it for a wedding. It's an extravagant indulgent cake so no, no um, shortcuts here. 
this is OTT. <laughs> so I've smoothed my fondant on the top and I'm going to move relatively quickly and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to skirt it out and then fan. Ha! I hope you can see because my hand might be in the way of filming again and it's basically lift and ruffle out and pat with the other hand. So it's like two motions, two motions. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then passing it down with your hand to make sure that it's stuck to the cake. And then pushing that fondant in. You can use this reef, reuse this fondant, you know, in before cutting. So you get a close cut to the bottom of the cake and it doesn't rough up and ends up with a cut higher. Okay, that's just how I do it. I've lost my pizza cutter. Here it is. Um, and then very gently, slow. Don't rush this. Do not rush this. You've worked too hard, as I say. All right. You've worked far too hard to mess up now. <laughs> right, so again, pulling that over. And we can always go back in again and trim if we don't take enough off. But just be aware. Okay. And we've took all of that excess off. And then with your smoother, I run it around like this on an angle to get the bottom flat so that the fondant is pushed. I hope you can see this um, into the base of the cake and then smooth it around. You're basically polishing the fondant and there's lots of tools you can use. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of tools. Um, um, but I, it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't. Um, if you have any air bubbles in and pockets, then you can always uh, prick them with a cocktail stick and uh, smooth it back over again and it should get rid of them. It, well, it does for me. I don't appear, looking at it, as I've got any air pockets. No. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a warm in my house because I've got cold. I've had my heating full blast because I keep getting cold flushes than hot flushes. Um, but I'm going to off camera keep smoothing that and polishing that up. Um, but now it's done, you can then decorate it to how you want. Um, this is, as I say, going to be a wedding cake. But if it was a Christmas for Christmas, you would put your little snowmen on or whatever you've made. I have some great tutorials out there showing you how to make a fondant snowman. I'm going to be doing one how to make a penguin when I feel a little bit better. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you have a magical Christmas whether you make this cake or not. Thanks for your time. Bye.